Good afternoon, everyone. You have heard of the Santa Ana winds before. For creating emotional state changes in humans, higher levels of violence, hormone changes with serotonin. But did you know these winds are also in other places across the planet? This entire list as well of affecting winds on human behavior. Now let's talk about cosmic rays for a moment. That 19% is on top of what has increased over this solar cycle as well. These are energetic particles, and they also have mood disorders associated with them. What seems like insanity going across this planet right now could definitely be linked to this. Although at the same time, there's great leaps in human evolution of terms of art, technology, state of consciousness at this exact same time. Welcome to the new Grand Solar Minimum. And while you're watching the video, please remember to press that subscribe button and click the bell to make sure you stay subscribed to get the latest updates. And this video is brought to you by foodforliberty.com forward slash adapt 2030 heirloom vegetable seed kit enough to grow 10 acres. Click the link below to see what else they offer. For those of you in North America, you're probably most familiar with the Santa Ana winds. These are the high dry winds that actually come from the desert over the mountain range into California, the opposite direction which the normal flow is. And what happens during this time is an electron gets knocked off the molecule, leaving it with a positive charge. This is a graphic here to show you how the electron is stripped. There's a couple things to take note right away. Increasing flow of the oxygen to the brain, vitamins of the air, but if you reverse that, and if you strip an electron off of there, this is going to cause more fatigue. And this could explain why people get angry, hostile. There's a lot of suicides, there's fights, all types of activity changes in the human state during these Santa Ana winds. Area on the map here, the winds flowing out of the desert versus flowing from the sea inland. The dry winds are also termed the Fohan in Europe. And there's several other instances around the planet the Saharev in Israel. And they also get into the article here briefly about the electrification of the atmosphere. And we are going into the grand solar minimum and there are electrical changes abounding at the moment. A quick trip around planet Earth. There's a lot of other locations that this exact same phenomenon happens with the stripping of the electron, turning it into a positive ion. Kamsin winds. The Egyptians even had glyphs to represent these type of south winds, the Fohen wind, type of dry warm wind downslope. Let's go up into Scotland, Ireland, Wales area. They call it riding the wind when this bothersome wind comes through that changes the behavior pattern of people in the villages and towns. If we go back further in history, ancient Greek mythology talks about these and they have been cataloged again and again and again. Easily starting in the 15th century, when they notice when the wind changes, there are absolute effects to the human psyche and behavior. They've linked it pretty much to these positive ions raising blood levels of serotonin. And they also even find this in people that are weather sensitive. They have excessive amounts of serotonin. The Orishi in Japan as well. North America, South America, Middle East, they are everywhere these type of emotional affecting winds. This is a list of the major winds, but those are broken into subcategorical winds as well. You can run these down on your own time. I've put the links below. And the Association for Psychological Sciences also linking global warming with violent behavior. It talks about temper flares and irritability and likelihood of physical aggression as people become warmer or they have these different stress electrical states in the atmosphere. What I noticed in the article, they actually even put on food scarcity. Now, if you add on top of this, when people are hungry, and you've heard your friends joking about it called they're hangry because they're hungry and angry at the same time, they just get a little tweaked because they're dehydrated and they haven't had enough food and they just snap at the smallest thing. And then add on top of this, all these other stress points, and you can see it's a volatile mix. Now, the reason I'm explaining all of this to you, if on the terrestrial system here on the earth itself, we have all of these triggers for human behavioral changes, what's going to happen when the galactic cosmic rays increase another 19% over this last 16% increase? And if you're not familiar with the grand solar minimum, 
Our magnetosphere weakens during this time as the sun's output also diminishes. This allows more galactic cosmic rays in. It's a twofold effect, if you will, more cloud cover being formed on the Earth, and these energetic particles also interacting with all life on this planet. And we're starting to see this 19% reading already in the northern New England states of the U.S. These are the galactic cosmic rays here in a cloud chamber, visible. And you notice a discernible increased trend from 1971 until now. Now we're going to need to add another 19% on top of this. That line is not going to stay linear as such. It's that definitely is going to have to take an increase breaking that pattern over this next solar cycle. And 26 as well, solar cycle 26, it's going to be another increase on top of this. So it's all down to the science. We're just talking about energetic particles here. This is an image from the Wilson cloud chamber. It's a sealed environment with super saturated water vapor. Could be water, alcohol, and it allows the background radiation and cosmic rays otherwise invisible to our eyes to be visible when a charged particle interacts with a mixture. It's ionized, whoosh. There's your streak in the, in the mist, literally. And I would highly encourage you to take a look at cloud chamber videos on YouTube. The amount of particles coming through is astounding right now. But they're just showing an enormous uptick in the density of these particles. And then add on top of this neurobiology, talking about the influence of geomagnetic flux relating to the Earth's magnetic field and charged particles. We are absolutely entering this time where our geomagnetic field is going to be decreasing and these charged particles are going to enter in exponential form for over what they are right now and what they have been. And one of the things they've correlated as well, it seems during these grand solar minimums, the lead up into is tumultuous. But during the time of increased bombardment, there's great leaps in human evolution in terms of art, technology, thought, states of consciousness, which lead to this renaissance type of thinking as we exit out of the grand solar minimum. On to our physiological flesh and bones bodies here. We're far more than that. We're bioelectric energetic field receptors. So what do you think happens when there's a change in the electromagnetic state around us? Or even this thing that we're standing on called the Earth. Our Earth's not in orbit around a star in such close proximity that we're sitting in a bubble unaffected by the largest thing in our solar system. And then we ourselves, in comparison to the size of our planet, its electric field affects our electric field. And when we go further out, what's past our solar system into the galactic field itself? We're all electromagnetically connected. So there are going to be changes in the way we think, feel, and behave. And they've also pegged galactic cosmic radiation to mood disorders. So when you see so much upheaval in society happening right now and things that you look at currently in August of 2017 and you say that is absolutely insane. They should be in a mental hospital seeking psychiatric care for the behavior that is condoned at the moment. And it doesn't matter if it's societal norms and thought or if it's economic behaviors in central banks or if we come down into business culture or wherever you are, you notice something is completely amiss right now. And just understand it. If you know the cause, you can react better. Instead of coming out of fear and anger, you can start to pinpoint it and say, all right, these changes are coming swift and fast. And this grand solar minimum is going to usher in food shortages, more massive flooding, weather changes. And now we got mood disorders from the human populace on top of this. And think about your bioelectric field. You have this huge array of different electrical particles, whether they be low energy or high energy particles, bombarding our Earth right now. And it is going to continue to increase from this point forward noticeably. So when we talk about a reset button for society, as has happened with every single grand solar minimum, I do believe that these electrical changes also are part of the evolution of what we're going through right now. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please support me on PayPal or Patreon if you have the means. If you don't, please pass this through your social media. That will help me so much.